Hi, this is GED teacher Damon Tennant, and I want to share with you an example of a video of me answering one of my online GED course students' questions right in the middle of our online GED course experience. This is one of the things that I love about doing what I do online because as students are working through my course, they can type a question right in that course and then I can come back and answer their question through a video or text, whatever is necessary, and then that way they don't get stuck. So if you are sick and tired of working through that big fat GED book and getting stuck and scratching your head and trying to figure out videos and things that help you with what you're reading in that big old book, then you need to go to my website, mygedlive.com, and enroll in my online GED course and get the help that you need. Let's move on. All right, Esteban, so I see that you had a question here on number four. So let me go ahead and work number four through for you. Um, let's get a pencil color here that works on this black screen. So the very first thing you have to do is you have to recognize um, the uh, identifying your question. You know, that's always the first thing we do. You want to ID the question. And so the question is to write an equation that represents this scenario. OK, so just looking at the information here, you see uh, a big hint here that says the relationship is linear. And so we know that when we're graphing an equation of a line, we know that's y equals mx plus b, the slope intercept form. OK. So now, so, so by identifying the question and pulling a little bit of information, that's what we are going to do. Um, sorry, I was trying to make it two there. And then we're going to state your path. So anytime we're looking at anything, any kind of linear equation, equation of a line or anything like that, you know, you're using that y equals mx plus b. That's very key. So let me just highlight that with the yellow there. All right, and come back to my uh, red. So now we have some information. So we know that when it's about 68 degrees, we know it's a 124 chirps per minute. And we know that when it's 80 degrees, it's uh, about 172 chirps per minute. And we get that just from little pieces in the problem, 68 and 124 and 80 and 172. So we can almost just make our little chart here from these, you know, um, uh, here's the Fahrenheit side. And so Fahrenheit degrees Fahrenheit. And then here put a C for chirps. Another way to also look at that is like the X and Y, you know, so you have your graph, right? So if you were making your graph and, you know, so you would have 68 here on the X axis and 124 there. And that will be the point of that chirp. And then over here would be 80. Bring that out some. And over here would be that chirp up there somewhere at, at 172. And then so now you're starting to get an equation that lands on that line. OK, so again, you have to kind of see this also as this. Let me just get a different color here for emphasis. Um, this being the X. And this being the Y. See, again, that is why you can't just simply prepare for the GED test by simply solving these. You have to know how they apply in real world situations, what the GED test is going to do. So the first thing we know, so we have an X and Y point. So we can fill out the X, the X point here and the Y point there. But we don't have the M and the M is the slope. OK, so we're going to use our formula for slope. OK, and so that's. M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And so we're just going to take this as Y2 172 minus Y2, or sorry, uh, minus Y1 is 124. Actually, I'm going to change my ink here to purple. So it looks better on the light part of the screen. Then X2 
um, we're going to take 80, right here is x2 minus x1. So then 172 minus 124 is going to give us 48. And then 80 minus 68 is going to give us 12. And so that's going to give us a slope of 4. Now, so we have the slope, and we have an x point, and we have a y point to complete, but we don't know b, the y-intercept. So now we're going to plug in um, what we have for the formula. So let me get back to my yellow, because it looks better in the black. Okay, mx plus b. So we have our m right here. So we're going to plug that in right here for m. And then we're just going to choose a point for X and Y. It doesn't matter just as long as you use the same point. So we're just going to use these points here, this first point here. So X is 68. Plus B. And Y in that case is 124. Okay, and then we're just going to do some math here. So we're going to drop that 124 down. And then 4 times 68 is 272. And then B. Okay, and if you've been working on the other lessons leading up to this, you know that you need to do the opposite. So we're going to get minus 2. Sorry about that, 2. 72 and minus 2, 72 over here. So that's going to give us negative 148. That's going to cancel out 272 minus 272. So now we know what B is. So now we have an X point. We have a y point, we have the m, and we have the b. So now we can establish our equation. So now we can just simply say y, because y can be a variety of outputs, equals the slope, which is always the same, m, times x, which could be a variety of outputs. And then this is a minus 48. So we're going to say instead of plus, we can say plus a minus 48, or else we can just say minus 148, plugging in that b value. And that would be your answer for that question, David. So again, uh, multiple steps here on this question. But again, the, the point is, you know, we could solve and, and do exercises on these. Those are the skills and those are great. But it's about being able to pull information out of the text because on the GED test, that's where you're really going to receive your challenge. So now I'm going to go ahead and erase uh, this data. And remember, this is video, so you can rewind it and see what I've done. Um, but I'm going to erase it so that I can click back upon this actual test that I'm just doing live here. And then y equals 4x minus 148 was what we chose. We got the answer correct. And that is it. Uh, Esteban, thank you for all the hard work that you're putting in on this and um, wish you the best.